So HPLC can be used for quantification of the impurities present into the pharmaceuticals. The next important question is, do I really need to prepare diluted standard or not? So this is the topic of today's video and we are trying to understand what are the facts you need to consider while quantifying related substances against diluted standard. Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get absolute clarity on various technical aspects with the help of proven system. So if you are struggling with technical aspects or career growth and would like to unleash your true potential, consider joining the Pharma Growth Hub. To know more about the services of the Pharma Growth Hub, join the WhatsApp group of Pharma Growth Hub by using the link given in the description. So now let us talk about diluted standard method for quantification of related substances by an HPLC or gas chromatography. So what is the diluted standard or it is also can be called as external standard method. So word diluted means what? You are using the standard solution which is quite diluted. Now how much diluted is the question? So most of the times we found that the people using the concentration of the diluted standard near about the concentration of an impurity. Now what is meant by concentration of an impurity? It can be the specification of an impurity. So which impurity specification has to be considered because you have three known impurities. You have the specification for unknown impurity. So which impurity specification you must consider? Now as the specification for known impurity can be different. Let us say you have impurity A, B and C and the specification for impurity A is not more than 0.3%, specification for impurity B is not more than 0.6% and specification for impurity C is not more than 0.9%. So are you going to make the diluted standard at 0.3 or 0.3 or 0 uh, 0.6 or 0.9%? <laughs> there is quite confusion, right? Now, there is nothing wrong in choosing either one of the specification for preparation of the diluted standard. But do you have any another impurity specification which is more neutral and that can be about the highest unknown impurity. So I often found people using highest unknown impurity specification to decide on to the diluted standard concentration. So for example, if the highest unknown impurity specification for your product is not more than 0.5%, you can consider 0.5% as the concentration for the diluted standard. So you will make the diluted standard maybe by using your reference or working standard of the API hmm? or in case if you do not want to use the API for preparation of the diluted standard, you can also use test sample for diluted standard preparation. There are number of methods available in the monographs which says that further dilute the sample solution until you reach to the certain concentration of your standard. So use either working or reference standard of your API or you can also use the test sample itself for preparation of diluted standard. So once you run the chromatogram, once you inject the sample and have the chromatogram in the place, you are going to calculate the peak area for individual impurities, isn't it? That is the first point. And how you are going to prepare the diluted standard? You are usually going to prepare the diluted standard with the concentration to that of highest unknown impurity specification. HUI stands for highest unknown impurity. So for example, you have three impurities in your chromatograph with peak areas of impurity A or compound A as 5000, compound B as 25000 and compound C as 20000, right? So these are the three impurities you have in the sample. The peak area 
of the diluted standard at 1% concentration is 5000 right so this is the diluted standard concentration you have which is 1% and what is the response of the diluted standard you got now it is 5000 area hence the content of compound a will be how much the response of a compound A divided by a response of the standard into what is the concentration of standard? It is 1%. So multiply by 1% gives the 1%. So this is the way to calculate the content of compound A. Similarly, the compound B can be calculated to be 5%. Compound C can be calculated to be 4%. Now share, you must be wondering, where is the preparation of diluted standard, the weights and potency of the standard, etc. You can also consider the actual concentration of standard, actual concentration of taste during the calculation. But just to make it very simple, I have just considered that 1% as a multiplication factor. I hope you understand. The another important point in case if, your, if the response for your impurities are different from the different from the principal compound and we have to calculate the relative response factor and this can be calculated maybe by using the slope method. So once you have the relative response factor for an impurity you can also use that RRF value RRF stands for relative response factor for that impurity during the calculation and here is the example. Let us say you have compound A and the relative response factor that is RRF for compound A is 1.2. So you need to divide this uh, uh, entire calculation by RRF. So you will see the similar kind of calculation happening over here. 5000 is the peak response for impurity A. 5000 is the response for your standard into 1% over here. You can see as I say in the first case 0.1% is also coming over here. But here is another factor which is 1 divided by 1.2. So I am actually dividing this entire calculation by 1.2 nothing but by RRF. And hence you will end up by getting the 0.83 percentage as the content of compound A present into a sample. I hope you are clear in case if you have to use RRF how this can be used. Now the next important question is when the diluted standard or which is also known as the external standard can be used for RS by an HPLC. So the diluted standard method can be used if the principal compound has a non-linear response through the range example from LOQ to 150% at the sample concentration. Now here I would like to explain and elaborate this point further. See most of the times in case of HPLC by using let us say UV detector we always know that the UV detector has the in proportionate response at the higher concentrations hmm? at the higher concentrations so you may not get the similar increase in the response after some concentration let us say your response is i'm talking about the accept, uh, absorbance unit now right in case of uv uh, once you achieve let us say one au absorbance value so you may achieve the linear response until 1.5 but beyond that sometimes you may end up getting the lower increase or lower response for the further increase in the concentration. That is called as the limitations of the Beer-Lambert's law. And this happens because of the photometric effect. So because of that, you know, even you uh, increase the concentration you may not get this similar kind of increase in the response. Now the question over here is, now what is the concentration of impurities present into your sample? Let us assume that the concentration of sample is 400 ppm. How much is the concentration of the sample? It is 400 ppm. So let us say you have a impurity at 1% level. So what will be the response, uh, what, will, what will be the concentration of the impurity? 
one percentage of 400 ppm becomes 4 ppm now the 4 ppm is quite low and it will be very much linear right but when you talk about 400 ppm now you are not very much sure that the if you get the 4 area for 4 ppm what you are ideally should get the area for 400 ppm 4 area for 4 ppm and hence 400 peak area should be for 400 ppm but if you end up getting only 300 then okay so that is not the linear response then and this is most of the times happening so to avoid this uh, error in the response hmm, we need to go for the diluted standard because if you prepare the diluted standard at 4 ppm you will get exactly 4 area you will not end up getting 3 areas so the impurities across this similar concentration of uh, 1% can be easily calculated without any error so the percent area normalization percent area normalization is another technique which can be used in case if you have a linear response from your 4 ppm to 400 ppm or beyond that but in case if it is not then go for the diluted standard method so what are the advantages of the diluted standard now as we understand that in what situation i need to go for the diluted standard let us also understand what are the benefits the advantages of the diluted standard and the first one is very important and we talked about it in case if the principal compound do not have a linear response from the aloq of the principal compound until the 150 concentration of the taste preparation the diluted standard method can be used if the principal compound has unacceptable recovery through the range. Now sure I would like to explain this point further. See most of the times in case of uh, related substances we do conduct the recoveries for the impurities. And what is the concentration of impurity? Let us say 1%. And what is the concentration of the taste? It is 400 ppm. So the 1% of 400 ppm becomes 4 ppm and you may be able to achieve the recovery of impurity at 4 ppm very easily but will you be able to achieve the recovery of the principal compound at the taste concentration which is 400 ppm and the answer could be may not be exactly as per requirement can be little low and now the question is if it is quite low then you cannot use the percent area normalization method but you have to use the diluted standard method so this is the second advantage of the diluted standard the third point is the diluted standard method can be used if the peak shape of the principal compound gets distorted through the range especially at higher concentration so in case if the peak shape is not good at the sample concentration level still it is okay because you are using the diluted standard right which has the beautiful peak shape for the quantification of the impurities. So you are not much worried about the, the distorted peak shape. But make sure that the peak shape is not too much distorted like M shape. If it is having a tailing or little bit getting saturated on the top, it is still be acceptable. Now what are the limitations of diluted standard method? We talked about the advantages of the diluted standard method. Are there any limitations? Yes, there are few. And here it is now the high impact due to interference at the principal peak from the, the blank or the placebo. The placebo may not be much relevant, but I would like to con I, I would like to say that the interference from the blank or the diluent is certainly going to impact in case if you are thinking using the diluted standard method and the interference at which retention time the interference from the blank at the retention time of the principal compound. Let us assume that you are having the interference coming from the blank which is below LOQ, I understand that. Uh, because you are going to make sure that the response of the uh, blank is not more than the LOQ but if it is below LOQ and assume the response is, uh, is, is 2000. How much 2000? It is below LOD even. The response at the retention time 
of the principal compound in the blank is 2000 area. Just assume that the response of your diluted standard is 5000. Now if you just add 2000 into 5000, it becomes 7000. So what is the percent response because of the dilute? If the 5000 is your area response of the of a diluted standard, so it is going to be if uh, it is going to be 40 percent, it is going to be a 40 percent. So I think if you look at the calculation part, the response of the diluted standard is always at the denominator. So rather than saying 5000, you will say the response is now 7000. So you will end up reporting, I think, almost 40% impurities on the lower side, if I'm not wrong. You can do it, you can calculate it, but roughly it will be 40% on the lower side. So if the limit of the impurity is 0.5, and if it is exactly coming 0.5, now what is the 40 percentage of the 0.5? It is 0.2. So you will say it is now 0.3%. Right, 0.3 percent, but when you actually remove this interference because of the uh, diluent, it can be 0.5 percent, which is actually out of the specification. So, that is the impact or the limitations of using the diluted standard. Make sure that there is no interference coming out of the diluent when you are using diluted standard method. I hope you are clear on how this can be impacted onto the end result. And the second important point is system variability, like injection to injection variation will impact onto the end result. So you must have a suitable system. You must have an analytical test procedure where repeatability precision is, is to a highest possible degree. Thank you so much. I hope you now are, now you are clear on to understanding or implementing the diluted standard method for quantification of the related substances.